two armed men against my Derringer are not very good odds. But it's the chance I'll have to take if you expect me to bring your sister back alive. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Yeah, who is it? It's her boy. All right. You lock door, Mr. Paladin? It didn't lock itself, eh, boy? Oh, you not usually do this, Mr. Paladin. Just closing the barn door before the horses are stolen. Oh, horse you not allowed in hotel room. Yes, hey, boy. That's why I sent you to the livery stable. Is everything set? So you load big gun and little cousin, too, eh? Little cousin? Oh, yeah, the Derringer. That's the kind of insurance I need for this trip. What about the horses? Oh, yes, sir. A uh, man at Sabre has fast horse ready. Good. He said, unless you want to wear to get fresh ones on trip. Most unusual. Shorties at Prickly Pear Springs, Louis in Lonesome Valley, a one eye in Hangman's Gulch. Now, Mr. Paladin, uh, why you go to these strange places? Uh, well, uh, get fresh horses, hey, boy. I just put the list with my coat over on the bed, will you please? Yes, sir. Uh, you not tell hey boy where you go, but he will still help you pack. No, no, don't bother. I'm all ready as soon as I finish with these guns. Oh, my. What? Ooh, holy mother. Hey, boy. Mm. Hey, boy, I told you I was all packed. Now, you didn't need to open the saddlebags. Oh, we saw piloting so much money. Ooh. All right, all right, now you know. That's why the door was locked. That's payroll money for a railroad construction crew. They had one shipment stolen. They've hired me to bring this one in. I'm traveling alone to avoid attracting attention. So for your own protection, hey, boy, and for mine, don't mention this to anyone. You understand? Uh, hey, boy. Ooh. <laughs> I guess the sight of so much money has left you speechless for once. <laughs> Constipation is something people don't talk much about, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Now, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting, a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Well, pleasant-tasting chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. <laughs> I rode hard for five long days and had as many layers of trail dust on my clothes to prove it. But finally I arrived safely at the miserable town of Terminal. Dirty as I was, I began to feel cleaner as I rode along the filthy street crowded with the riffraff and the lowlife who follow construction camps. And then, suddenly to my amazement, I saw a young gentleman strolling along as immaculately dressed as if he had just stepped out of a fashionable haberdasher to New York City. And I wasn't the only one who saw him. Two men were luring him into an alleyway, and I realized the young man was headed for trouble. Come on, boy. Hey, look out, mister. Look out behind you. Run for it. Hey. Ooh, ooh. You all right? Yes, I guess so. Belted me a good one, didn't he? There were two of them. They told me that a man had been injured in here. I'm afraid you fell for an old trick. Here, let me help you up. Oh, thank you, sir. All right. Well, I owe you my life, I would say. They very well could have done me in. I must repay you, sir. My name is Henry Matthews, Jr. Mine's Paladin, but no, don't worry about repaying. Oh, I insist, Mr. Paladin. 
You will have supper with us. Meet my father and sister. Your sister, Mr. Matthews? In a town like this? But of course, why not? Well, I... Your clothes make you somewhat out of place in terminal, much less your sister. Oh, I see what you mean. I suppose it was my clothes that attracted those ruffians. I was looking this curious place over. We've only just arrived. But come along, you must meet my family. I didn't know there'd be a hotel in this town. Oh, you have quite a surprise in store, sir. Yes, I'm sure I have. Oh, we're nearly there, Mr. Paladin. It's just around that building. You'll like Father. He's a good sort. Alice is attractive enough, but rather stuffy at times. <laughs> You know, I still can't get over seeing you in a place like Terminal. Abroad, maybe, say on the Champs-Élysées. <laughs> well, actually, we were all set to take the grand tour this summer, but Father decided a trip west would be good for us, and I love it. Alice hates it. Father's president of the railroad, you see, and... Oh, there we are. Well, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> it's Father's, specially built for him. A private railway coach on a siding. Mm -hmm. It's really quite nice inside. I think you'll like it. Oh, I'm sure I would, Mr. Matthews, but I really can't. I'm much too dirty and dusty for such accommodations. I don't even have fresh clothes. No problem at all. First a bath, then your choice of my wardrobe. I'd say we're practically of a size. Oh, did you say bath? Of course. The very least I could do. Shall we? <laughs> I'd be a fool to refuse. Uh, I should explain. I'm delivering some, uh, well, important papers, so even though my saddlebags seem filled, I don't have other clothes. No need to explain. Tie up here at the end of the vestibule. Our man will stable your horse. Thank you. If you like, I'll place your saddlebags in the coach safe. I'm sure Father won't mind. Oh, fine. I'll bring them in. My valuable papers will be right at home in your safe. Right up. After you, Mr. Paladin. Thank you, sir. Oh, there's Alice. Henry Matthews, Jr., just what do you think you're doing? Hello, Alice. I saw you from inside with this... This man, Junior, you aren't bringing him inside, are you? Yes, Alice, I am. He did me a very great favor. He's staying for supper. My sister, Alice, Mr. Paladin. How do you do, Miss Matthews? Junior, do you have to subject us to the company of just any saddle tramp you drag in from the street? Alice! Really, I thought you had better take it. Oh, I'm terribly embarrassed, Mr. Paladin. Well, perhaps she's right. I'm not a very pleasant-looking supper companion at the moment. We'd, uh... We better make it some other time. Um, well, that looks like a boarding house of sorts over there. Nonsense. You're coming inside, uh, and we'll make Alice eat her words. You just follow me. Are you coming? Huh? Oh, yes, all right, if you insist. I do. What were you looking at? Those two men who tried to rob you. Where are they? No, they've disappeared. I think they were watching us. Well, don't worry about them. We'll be safe inside. Will we? <laughs> Truthfully, Matthews, I'd rather tangle with those toughs out there than go inside to face your sister. Smoking more now, but enjoying it less. Have a real cigarette. So good. Have a camel cigarette. So rich. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. So mild. Have a camel cigarette. And here's the reason why. Best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a camel cigarette. Mm, you can say that again. Best tobacco makes the best smoke. If you're smoking more these days, but enjoying it less, then change to Camels, the best tasting cigarette of all. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. I soon forgot about the two rough looking men outside. It was hard to believe that I was in the miserable town of Terminal. The luxury of the Matthews private railway car left nothing to be desired. A bath, a shave, 
Clean towels and a handsomely tailored suit gave me a new outlook on life. To your good health, Paladin. And to yours, sir. Oh, I think that washed away the last of my trail dust. <laughs> Well, I must say, Paladin, Alice's saddle tramps become more of a gentleman than she ever met in Boston. It's surprising what soap and water can do, plus clean clothes. Oh, it's not just that. Well, it's obvious you're a man of culture and intelligence. I can hardly wait till Alice sees you. Mm -hmm. You and your sister often have, shall we say, differences of opinion? No. I'm just a younger brother to dear Alice. She's convinced I have no judgment whatsoever. She may be right most of the time, but I get rather tired of having her prove it. <laughs> I'm sure to show her up with you. But we'll soon find out. Father ought to be back now. He had some business with the foreman of the construction crew. Yes, I'm looking forward to meeting him. I imagine he's in the drawing room. Junior! He is. Right here, Father. What's this Alice has been telling me about you inviting some drifter to supper? That's exactly what he did, Father. Complete stranger. Oh. Good evening, Miss Matthews. Alice, dear, it's not polite to stare. May I say, Miss Matthews, that's a lovely gown you're wearing. Hmm. Junior, what the devil is going on? Father, may I present Mr. Paladin, my drifter as well as my benefactor. He saved me from being beaten and robbed this afternoon. How do you do, sir? Well, welcome aboard, Mr. Paladin. Anyone who can keep Junior out of trouble is a good man. Really, Alice, he doesn't seem so objectionable. Not in Junior's suit, Father. Oh, it's not my suit any longer. Fits him better than it did me anyway. Didn't Mr. Paladin have any clothes of his own? He was traveling light. Delivering valuable papers, didn't you say, Paladin? I believe they're now delivered. I brought your payroll from San Francisco, Mr. Matthews. It's in the coach safe. W what? You didn't tell me, Paladin. You brought it alone? Well, one rider attracts less attention than an armed guard. Amazing. I like your style, Mr. Paladin. We needed that cash desperately. Well, this calls for a celebration. Mm, a double one. I've already asked Cook to prepare something special. Oh, and champagne, Father. Good for you, Junior. Let's go into supper. I think for once you've done the right thing. Thank you, Father. I thought you'd approve. <clears throat> My arm, Miss Matthews. Thank you. It's not often a simple man of the saddle has a chance to dine with so gentle a lady. Oh, shut up. <laughs> My pleasure, ma'am. I'd have been quite skeptical if someone had told me when I rode into Terminal that I'd soon be dining in plush surroundings on continental cuisine with the president of a railroad, his son, and very lovely daughter. Miss Alice Matthews took every opportunity to discount me as being any kind of gentleman, but to her brother's delight, I was able to counter her every move. After supper, she excused herself for a breath of fresh air on the vestibule. I would have been very happy to join her, but Mr. Matthews wanted to talk business, and talk he did for nearly an hour. Yes, sir, Mr. Paladin, there's plenty of money to be made in the West. Our railroad will serve the new mines just opened. Limitless possibilities. Really, Father, our guest has been riding night and day on our behalf. We ought to turn in so he can have the rest he's certainly earned. <laughs> We've been terribly rude, Mr. Paladin. Will you forgive us? No, oh, there's nothing to forgive. I've enjoyed the company, and the supper was superb. My compliments to your chef. And my deep appreciation to Miss Matthews. Miss dear Alice rather retreated in confusion, didn't she? Say, I didn't see her come back into the coach. And no doubt retired some time ago. Business talk rather bores Alice. And Paladin here showed her up beautifully on any other subject. Well, I didn't mean to. Exactly. Well, she deserved it. I'm forever grateful to you. Show Mr. Paladin to his quarters, Junior. <laughs> Good heavens! Stay clear of the window. What was that? It looked like a stone. Someone threw it into the coach. Wait a minute. Yeah, here it is. It's under the table. There. There's a note tied to it. A note? What could that mean? Uh, we'll soon see. Yeah, there's a ring in it. Wasn't Miss Alice wearing this? Why, yes. This is her ring. I don't understand. I'm afraid I do. This note. Miss Matthews is being held for $10,000 ransom. She's been kidnapped. Maggie, your rug looks like new. Shampooed it myself right on the floor. And you said impossible. That's when I was all tired out with nagging backache. And muscular aches and pains. And am I glad I took your tip about that. You said try Doan's pills. Good advice. 
That's Doan's Pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's Pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's Pills today. To save money, buy Doan's Big Economy Size. <laughs> Crudely scrawled note demanded $10,000 for the return of the young lady. It also stated that her brother was to deliver the money behind the terminal saloon at midnight, and he was to come alone and unarmed. The Matthews, senior and junior, offered rather drastic solutions. I'll deliver the money and then thrash the scoundrels. We'll call out the whole construction crew. Now, we'll have them and tear this town apart. Gentlemen, gentlemen, either way, Miss Alice might be harmed. The two men who tried to rob Henry and then followed us here are probably behind this. No, we'd better comply with their orders, with one exception. What do you mean, Paladin? It's obvious that if you took the money, they'd take you too, demand double the ransom. Now, it's almost midnight. I'm already dressed in your clothes, and we'll have to take the chance that they'll mistake me for you. And if they don't, I'll... Well, I'll simply tell them I'm her older brother. After that, I'll just see what I can do. But couldn't I? It's brave of you to offer, Junior, but Mr. Paladin's better equipped for this sort of thing. We'll pay you well, sir. No, I wouldn't think of it. That's very sporting of you, Mr. Paladin, but nonsense. Well, can't I even go with you? They said alone, Junior. Yes, but he won't be armed. No, not with my six-gun, just its little cousin, well-concealed. I beg your pardon? My Derringer. Good idea, Mr. Paladin. Now, there's only one thing that bothers me. Yes? Your sister. The kidnappers might accept me as her brother, but I doubt if she will. I had a feeling I was being watched from the moment I stepped out of the railway coach. The gambling saloons were doing a big business, so there were very few people on the street. I found the terminal saloon and walked behind it into the darkness. And the vague feeling that someone was behind me suddenly grew less vague when I felt a gun barrel against my back. Don't move, mister. <laughs> no guns, eh? Good thing for you. <laughs> we... We followed your orders to the letter. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Just putting a bag over your head, mister. And now, turn around. Drop that satchel and stick out your hands. Now, what's the meaning of Drop this? Drop it. I ain't taking no chances. Yeah, what, what do you think you're doing? With your hands tied and your head covered, you'll stay out of mischief. There we are. All the money in this bag? You see for yourself. Oh, don't you worry. I will. Right now, we're going to take a little wagon trip. Move. Huh? Oh, there. Oh. There, end of the line, mister. Climb down. Uh, how can I? I can't see with this confounded sack on my head. My hands are tied. Oh, well, then I'll just help you. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you dude sure ain't good at getting in and out of wagons. Come on. Get up and let's go. Inside. You get him? I got him. Money, too. Good. Guess we hit pay dirt this time. Yeah, and we're going to double it. My father will hear about this. Oh, that's right, Sonny. We'll get word to him. Should I put him in the other room with the girl? Yeah. I want to take a good look at this money. Come on, rich boy. Here's your little brother, lady. Wrapped up nice and neat. I don't believe you. Yeah. See for yourself. I'll take the sack off and show <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> what did they tell you? Alice, dear sister, are you all right? Uh, uh, come here and help me count this money. And we got to decide how much to ask for him. All right. Now leave a door open so we can watch him. Don't know what for. They ain't doing nothing. I never can tell. Put your arms around me, Miss Matthews. You're supposed to be my sister. My arms around you? <laughs> you might just save our lives. Our lives? Oh, yes. 
like this? Yes. Hug me now. And listen carefully. Don't move suddenly, but put your hand under my coat. Why? Look at him in there. <laughs> Scared to death. There's a derringer strapped under my arm. Get it for me. I can't reach it without moving. You've got to. My wrists are tied. Now pretend you're reaching up to kiss me. I couldn't. Kiss me. All right. There, I've got it. Now put it in my hand. I can hold it. What's going on in there? Oh, they're coming. When I turn to face them, drop to the floor. They seem kind of lovey-dovey now for brother and sister. Yeah. What are you two... Don't do? move, gentlemen. He's got a gun. Get him. Hit the floor, Alice. Drop that. <laughs> Are you all right, Miss Matthews? Yes. Are they dead? They are. Oh. Oh, thank heavens. Mr. Paladin, I must apologize for the way I acted. Don't give it another thought, Miss Matthews. It seems our whole family is indebted to you. Isn't there any way I can show my gratitude? Well... You might untie my hands. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Have gun. Will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Rod Peterson. Featured in the cast were Jack Edwards, Parley Bear, James Nusser, Jack Moyles, and Eleanor Berry. And now, here's a special word from our star, John Daner. The current crusade for freedom campaign is important to all of us. The forthcoming summit meetings could yield real results for peace and freedom, or they could turn into a propaganda parade for the communists. Now, one pressure on the communists to come to terms is truth. The whole truth Radio Free Europe sends through the Iron Curtain. Your truth dollars or half dollars or whatever you can give will help do the job. Send your truth dollars to Crusade for Freedom, care of your postmaster. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>